it's Belinda and today I am sharing a process video for documenting these three really beautiful photos of my daughter standing in front of a flower wall at a local restaurant. I'm going to be using the gorgeous Felicity Jane Megan kit. This is quite an old kit. I think it's from 2019 but I haven't broken into it yet because I loved it so much. And the colours and the florals just really go very well with these photos. What I have done off camera is I've gone through and fussy cut a whole heap of tiny flowers which were from this paper here and I'm going to incorporate those into the layout. So let's hop on to fast forward and get stuck in. Okay, so you can see that off camera I have added a white photo mat to each of my, or a white mat to each of my photos. And as is the case with almost every layout that I create at the moment, I am also matting the white background paper onto some patterned paper, which is this beautiful pink large polka dot paper. And then off camera I've run that through my sewing machine just to add some stitching detail around the outside. So for this layout, I already knew that I was going to be creating a grid pattern or a grid, grid design for this layout. And I'm going to layer up a few of the different pieces of patterned paper from this Felicity Jane kit. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting them down. They, my photos were printed at slightly smaller than three by four. So with the photo mat, you can see, <laughs> Something happened with my paper trimmer there that's never happened before. The actual blade itself popped out of the holder. Um, yeah, this Fiskars paper trimmer, it gives me some grief sometimes, but I still like it. Um, so as I was saying, my photo is slightly smaller than three by four. So I've started off by cutting these photo, sorry, these patterned paper pieces down to about a little bit larger than three by four. Uh, and I do come back and trim them off later. So with this stripe pattern paper, there were some of the colors in it that I just didn't want. I was really looking at focusing mainly on the pinks initially. So I cut down some of those strips so that I could get just the pink stripes there. And I've also pulled in with this collection, I picked up the six by six paper pad as well. So I'm grabbing some of the same papers that I chose from the 12 by 12s and also picking them up in the six by six sizes a six by six size as well so that I'm repeating those patterns but on a smaller scale so they're not going to clash too much with each other so yeah you can see now I'm creating a little pile of them a little pile of pattern papers which are roughly three by four and I will be using those to layer up behind my photos when the time comes just counting out how many I have because I knew I had three photos and I wanted to make sure that I had enough papers to layer those evenly behind them as well as leaving some papers behind for the three spaces on my layout where they will not be photos there will be um, filler cards and I decided that I wanted to keep the scalloped edge on this all of the Felicity Jane papers if you're not familiar with them all of the plain pattern the plain colored papers come with this beautiful scalloped edge down the bottom and there are really a whole heap of different ways that you can use them but for this project I've decided to keep that scallop and I've just fussy cut that out. So now I am starting to layer up the papers because the grid design is quite linear I wanted to offset that and provide a little bit of balance by layering up those papers behind my photos a little bit wonky. And you can see that what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the papers. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not repeating the order of the papers with each little stack. And I'm just giving them a quick little, adding a little tiny staple to the stack once I've got it in a position that I'm happy with to hold them together. You can see that I spend way too much time fussing with this. I really didn't need to spend as much time on it as I did, but you know, that's me. Uh, so as I was saying, I'm, I'm using not the exact same sets of papers, but because it's come from the same kit, the color scheme is really similar. And so I'm just trying to make sure that where I've got the pink on the top on that first photo, it's not on the top on either of the other two stacks. So I'd wanted to make sure that there, were no, there was no repetition, that it was a, looked a little bit more random. 
and one of those didn't staple all the way through so I'll go back on and then I'm just going to adhere the photo to the top and then I saved you the time off camera of me getting out my T-square ruler and lining them all up so those are all adhered down and now I am going to figure out how I want to fill in those spaces in the rest of the grid so I've decided that I'm going to create two decorative filler cards for the top left and the top right space and I'm going to try something a little bit fun and I'm cutting out some strips of the leftover pieces of pattern paper here and I'm just cutting them down to strips which are about one inch by four inches and again with that striped paper I am selecting the color of the stripe that I want to use and then I've got my fringing scissors and I'm going to run through and I'm going to fringe each of those paper strips just making sure that I am leaving the top part intact there and then I will come back in and I will glue them down onto just a piece, piece of plain white cardstock so they're all fringed now and I'm ready to adhere them down so what I've done is I've lined up that little that piece of white cardstock I'm lining it up against the grid on the cutting mat that I'm using just to make sure that I get these strips of fringed paper evenly spaced so they are overlapped overlapping a little bit I've put the first one down first and then I'm using the grid lines on that cutting mat to guide me where to put the next layer of fringing and they're overlapping by about half an inch each and as pure luck would have it it was not planned and I didn't go to the length of making particular measurements as pure luck would have it I had the right amount of pieces of fringed paper to finish off that page for the other side for the top right hand top left hand side of the layout I'm creating a another little bit of an interesting filler card using some pink light pink crepe paper you can see I've run some glue along the edge of that card and then I'm just going to ruffle up the crepe paper along the edge there and that's just to add a little bit more texture and interest to that card and to the layout and then off camera I do take that and I run it through my sewing machine just to run some stitching down the center of that crepe paper again for a little bit of texture and added interest and you can see now I've added a, some stitching to the top of the fringed card to the side of the crepe paper and also to this center scalloped piece which is going to hold my title and here I'm just showing you if you don't like the idea of using foam because it's not archival safe there are other options this is some really really thick ch chipboard like card that came in some packaging for scrapbooking products and I kept it and I cut it down and I use it to add some dimension to my layers without using the foam it's slightly lower in profile so it makes for a slim line um, for a flatter layout but it does add just that just enough uh, dimension to add some interest to the page and now I'm coming in and I'm having a look at the various bits and pieces that I've pulled out which I thought would go well with this layout you can see those two butterflies that I have there I stamped them onto the same pink cardstock that I've used throughout this layout which came in the kit and then I purchased with this kit the add-on die set which has um, metal dies to cut out those butterflies so I use those there and I only end up putting one of them on this page I believe and that's up in the top left there my title I knew that I wanted to use this die cut piece from the ephemera pack ephemera pack that came in the kit and it just says the word beautiful I my initial plan was to add some journaling to this page but I decided not to because there was another set of photos that I got at the same time and it was more of the outtakes so as I was working on this I had the idea that rather than trying to cram in the the beautiful photos and the beautiful embellishments and the title and the journaling onto this page I would just leave this page to feature the photos and those beautiful embellishments and just a really simple title and then on my companion page which I've done which I've created later I'd, 
I've then gone back there and added all the journaling, which fills in the story from these photos. So because that beautiful title was a really bold black, which didn't appear anywhere else on my layout, I decided that I needed to bring in something a little bit stronger to add some balance. So I've grabbed the stamp set that came in the kit and I've used some black archival ink to stamp that really bold blocky text which says lovely little moment. And at the same time, I've used my date stamp to just stamp out the date onto some white cardstock. And you can see I'm now starting to bring in some of those fussy cut florals. I'm trying not to put too much thought and overthinking into where I'm putting them. And I'm just grabbing some little bits and pieces and I'm layering them up behind the embellishment clusters that I've started. So I'm finishing off the title with these really tiny puffy uh, alphabet stickers, which are really, really cute. And it's just going to say beautiful girl. And again, the, those black puffy stickers are a really bold black uh, which I think had some a good bit of interest and balance because the rest of the layer is quite soft and obviously very pink as you can see so I think that pop of black is really needed to to bring some balance to the layout so having that beautiful the girl in those bold black alphas and then balancing that with the lovely little moment stamped up the top and I'm going to tuck that in behind that sweet little die cut piece, which is a posy, uh, flower posy inside a little jar. And I am going to continue tucking in some of these beautiful little fussy cut florals and creating some clusters. So with this title card up down the bottom, I end up tucking some flowers around the word beautiful and then I create a little floral cluster up in the top right hand side of that card. I just really wanted to accentuate the floral in the background. It's such a beautiful thing that they have. It's a kind of like a 50s style drive-in burger diner and they've set up this gorgeous pink and white flower wall which obviously makes it very instagrammable and you just can't not take photos in front of it it's so pretty and so sweet and such a cool addition to um, yeah to a little burger joint so when I am creating these layers, I am also being mindful of the colors that I'm using and the sizes of the flowers that I'm using and just making sure that I've got some balance, that I'm balancing out the placement of the colors and that I'm varying up the size of the flowers. So once I'm finished tucking those in, that is it for this layout. Quite simple, pretty fast. I hope you have enjoyed watching. Please go ahead and give this video a like if you have enjoyed it and I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.